Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we're taking a look today at the Blue Life One X2 Mini. This is a smaller form factor phone from Blue. It's got a five inch screen on it. It costs 179 bucks, so not all that expensive. And we'll be uh, putting this thing through its paces here in the course of this review. I do want to mention though, in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from Blue. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's step through the hardware now. I'm going to unlock it with my finger there's a fingerprint reader on the front. It does work pretty well to get you into the phone uh, without having to type in passwords every time once you set it up. It's got a Snapdragon 430 processor, so it's not going to be the fastest phone out there, but it's adequate enough to run most of the Android apps you might want to run on it, including many games, and we'll see a few of those a little later in the review. 5-inch 1080p display. I believe it is IPS, uh, really sharp, very bright, uh, really nice to look at and uh, read from and everything else you might do on your phone. I was very pleased and surprised with how nice the display was for the price point. 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage, so a lot of RAM and a lot of storage built in. And if that's not enough storage, there is a way to add an SD card uh, to it. There's a uh, SD card spot here in the SIM card tray. So what you can do here is run it on uh, two different carriers, or uh, you can have a single SIM card and then put in the micro SD card to uh, augment some of that storage if you wish to do that. So you have some options on that end. It does work with LTE carriers here in the United States, but it does not work with Sprint or Verizon. Uh, it is compatible with many other LTE carriers around the world. I'll put a link to my Amazon affiliate uh, thing down below so you can see some of the other bands that it supports. But uh, check it out before you buy, but it should probably work on most carriers throughout the world. Android 6.0 Marshmallow. It's got a 2300 milliamp hour battery, which is smaller than the larger variant of this phone, but I think it should be enough to get you through the day. Uh, in my testing, at least it did. But what you should know about these phones is that uh, depending on how far or close you are to your nearest tower, that's going to dictate how much battery life you're going to get on top of everything else you might do with the phone. So if you're just using it casually, I think you can get through a day. If not, uh, you might want to have some power nearby if you're going to be watching a lot of videos or uh, making a lot of phone calls or something. But it does support Qualcomm quick charging uh, version 3.0, so you can get your battery uh, filled back up pretty quickly. Now, if pink is not your thing, it does come in a couple of different colors, so you have a choice of that. It is all metal here on the back too, so it does feel pretty nice in the hand along with Gorilla Glass 3 on the front. So it feels like a really nicely constructed phone for the price. 8 megapixel camera on the front. It's decent, but not great. And I would also say the same thing about the camera on the back, which is 13 megapixels. Again, decent, but not great. I went outside and took some pictures with it earlier. Uh, the sharpness is pretty good on it. Uh, the photos are a little oversaturated for my tastes, but uh, good enough if you're looking for a basic shooter. Video is not as good on it because it doesn't have any stabilization. So it really is very susceptible to any uh, small knocks or bumps as you're uh, shooting video. The max is 1080p at 30 frames per second on the camera here on the back. And the speakers on here sound very nice. The headset speaker here is very crisp and clear and even a little loud. I had to turn the volume down when I was making a, a Skype call earlier. Uh, the speakerphone speaker on the bottom, which also works, of course, with your apps, also very loud and clear. So uh, decent speakers on here, uh, considering the price point and size. There isn't much on the way of ports, though. You've got that SIM card tray on that side, a volume rocker, power switch over here, micro USB connector on the bottom, not USB type C. And on the top here, you have your head phone jack and that is pretty much it. So let's see now how the phone performs. We'll load up a few apps and see what it can do. Now, one thing that happened when I first got the phone connected to my network is that it installed all of these apps. So although the experience feels very much uh, like stock Android for the most part, there are a few bits of bloatware that make their way down. I'm pretty sure you can remove these apps if you want, but these are uh, not something I really wanted on my phone, but they were there. So just bear that in mind. You might want to just take a few of those apps off when you first get everything up and running. But it will run the apps that you do want to run on your phone uh, quite well. So this is not going to be a speed demon. It won't be as fast as a four or five or $600 phone, but it's adequate enough to run things like YouTube here just fine. I've got it running on my Wi-Fi network now. It does not support wireless AC, but it does support wireless N. So it's good enough for what you will uh, run on here. But you can see YouTube is running quite nicely. It's pretty responsive as I'm uh, switching between videos here. I can even switch views uh, as I am going here as well. So uh, good performance out of that. And it runs games and other apps just as well. So let me just skip the ad here and I'll close out of this and maybe go over to a game that I have running, which 
which is uh, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. And you'll notice here, let me get out of the uh, whatever woods I'm in, uh, you'll notice here that it just came right up because I had it running in the background. And one of the advantages of having uh, four gigs of RAM on your phone is that uh, you can keep more running in the background without having to have things quit and then have to reload from scratch. So uh, we were doing some YouTube, we switched over to the game, there was no uh, load time or anything because it has enough RAM to keep everything uh, in the memory uh, simultaneously there. And you can see how nicely the game runs here also. So you really don't need a super fast phone to play a bulk of the games that might be out there. I've got Minecraft running here. This one is also sitting here waiting for me too. So uh, really good uh, to have this much RAM and a lot of flexibility, especially if you are often jumping back and forth between apps. Now one thing you'll notice here is that the uh, little task bar is gone on Minecraft, uh, but it is not gone when I go back to Grand Theft Auto here. So it does like to keep this uh, bar on the screen. So if your apps don't specifically get rid of it, uh, it will be there for most of what you're going to play on the device. There, I think there are some apps now that can get rid of that uh, bar without having to root the phone, but just keep in mind that it does like to leave that on screen. And on the 3D Mark Slingshot benchmark test, we got a score of 553, which definitely puts this phone and its larger sibling at the lower end of the performance spectrum, at least insofar as uh, these benchmark scores are concerned. But out in the real world, it's not as important just because so many Android apps are targeted at devices that come in around this performance point. So I don't think you're going to have any issues finding things to run and play on it. It does do most of what you'll want to do uh, pretty well, like browsing the web here. It's not a speed demon, but it's good enough and I think uh, really is a good fair price for uh, what you're getting here. And one of the nice things about having all this RAM is that because you can so easily and quickly switch back and forth between apps, it almost feels faster than it is because there really isn't much loading time going on because it can keep so much uh, in its internal memory. So all in, I think it's a pretty good value at 179 bucks. I really like these phones sometimes as extras, perhaps, if you have a nice larger phone and you want something smaller just to carry around with you if you're traveling or something. It's uh, very easy to uh, replace one of these things, especially because you're buying them unlocked for well under 200 bucks. But even as a primary phone, if you want something usable uh, that doesn't cost you all that much money, uh, these are definitely worth considering and I think will get you through a year or two at least and have a good amount of carrier compatibility provided you're not on Sprint or Verizon here in the United States. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.